Hi, everyone. Just going to wait a couple minutes for people to get on. Hi, everyone. How are you guys doing today? I'm out here at Lakeview. When you get on, um, let me know where you're at in the comments. How are you guys doing today? Hi. We're going to start right at 10 o'clock. Hope you all are doing well out there. If you're online, go ahead and put in the comments where you're from. Hi, Amy. Hi, Ava from Omaha. Welcome to our, our program this morning. I'm hoping that you have your paper and your markers ready um, or a cereal box and some construction paper and markers. We're going to have a fun activity today. We'll be getting started in just a minute. If you've just joined us, go ahead and comment where you're from. Okay, we are going to start. My name is Kat, and I am the program specialist here in Lake, at Lakeview Cabin in North Platte. And today we're going to talk about branding. So many of us are very familiar with what branding is in Nebraska, and I'm sure that some of you have been to a branding before. 
If you don't know what a branding is, let me tell you. Well, typically once a year, ranchers will host a branding where calves of cattle or other livestock are branded. A brand is a design that is seared into the hide of an animal, such as cattle, usually around the hip uh, to identify the owner of the animals. Each brand is distinct so that lost cows, either through wandering animals or cattle wrestlers, could be returned to their rightful own owner. This is what some brands look like. These are ones that, there we go, that you can see on cattle that are in the sand hills. So you can see they use a lot of different shapes and letters to make their brand. So today, some ranchers still utilize cattle branding to mark their livestock, much like they did back in the 1800s. It's part of the rich history and culture of the cattle ranching way of life. Now, um, sorry, on the Nebraska Brand Committee's website, you can actually see some brands that are available for ranchers that may be just starting their business. So if you wanna get into the cattle business, that's where you go. And here's some of the, the brands that are currently available. I like the one on the bottom left. It kind of looks like two lollipops. Pretty neat, huh? So they took this symbol made from metal that represented who they were and stuck it on the backside of livestock. So today in learning about branding and logos, we're gonna brand ourselves. But no, we are not going to give ourselves a cattle brand today. Uh, but we are, what we are going to do is find out what makes us all unique. So let's get started. Let me see if there's any questions. Okay, Jamie wants to know the supplies you need. So, and she is from La Vista. Uh, you need construction paper or white paper. If you have a cereal box, you can definitely grab a cereal box. It, uh, magazines, markers, crayons, pencils, anything like that that shows uh, pictures or illustrates something about you, something that you like. Okay, we'll get into that a little bit more later. So you're all familiar with business logos. The golden arches of, of McDonald's, the swoosh of Nike, the target symbol of and Walt Disney. So close your eyes right now and think of a logo of a brand you know. What do you think about when you picture the McDonald's sign? Do you see the golden arches? Do you see a giant M? When you pass someone on the street and notice a swoosh on a t-shirt or a shoe, do you know, just know that it's Nike? Can you picture the Amazon logo with that big smile at the bottom of it? Hi, Rhino. Hi, Hayden and Skylar from Lincoln. So what do companies with a strong logo have in common? Well, they make you recognize and remember them. Their logo and the way it makes you feel is part of their brand. So businesses want you to see a logo and have a certain reaction to it. They want you to trust them and buy from them. So let's look at a couple examples. So here we have the Nike swoosh. So what does Nike make? And you can answer in the comments. Anybody know what Nike makes? It might, there might be a delay between getting the answer, so. We'll just wait and see. Shoes, yes, Bridget says shoes. Yes, so Nike makes athletic apparel. 
So I just saw another comment. And clothes, exactly. Ashley and Bridget both said clothes. So when you look at the Nike swoosh, let's look at it. Okay, so when you look at it, what do you see? Does any, shoes, sport clothes, sweatbands, yep. What else do you see when you look at the Nike logo? Does anything stand out to you? Does it make you feel any certain sort of way? I'm <laughs> waiting for the comments. Well, I'll tell you what I see. I see speed, the shape of a foot, right? Oops, right here. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. The shape of a foot as a toe is touching down mid run. Athletes want to be fast and quick on their toes. The Nike logo evokes that feeling when you look at it. Even the word swoosh makes you think of the sound that of something or the sound something makes when it passes you by really quickly. Let's look at another one. Yeah, Gina says fast, exactly. That's exactly what it makes you feel like. So let's think about the Subway, Subway Sandwiches logo. Let me get that one up for you. So here is the Subway logo. What does this one make you feel? <laughs> does it make anybody feel hungry? Ready for lunch? All right, well, Subway is famous for its healthy sandwiches made in fast food style. The bright yellow is an eye-catching color, and the green gives people the feeling that the brand is healthy and environmentally conscious. I like that, Ashley. That's really good. You go in and out. Exactly. The arrows, both at the beginning and end of the logo, let people know that they're in and out fast. That's exactly right. Even the name Subway makes you feel like you're on the move. Oop, there's another comment, let me see here. Um, there re there's a reason both the S and the Y have arrows pointing the opposite direction. It's telling you to go buy a sandwich. Exactly, Tim, exactly right. So, they have successfully positioned their brand as a delicious, nutritious, and affordable choice for fast-paced consumers. Good job, Gina. Yep, they're going in and out. So let's look at one more to get an idea of how a logo can tell us about what a company does. Okay, we're going to think about the Twitter bird. Twitter is symbolized by a bird in flight with its little beak open. It looks like it's just tweeting along while it flies around. Don't you think that pretty much sums up what Twitter is? A whole world of people able to tweet about anything they want to, to all of their friends and family. Pretty neat, huh? It's become very, very recognizable. So sometimes in brands, there are even hidden elements in their logo. So let's look at some of those. You guys are all familiar with the Amazon logo. 
So here it is. Here is the Amazon logo. And the logo is pretty simple. It's the name of the company with a smile underneath. See that smile underneath right there? Well, is it just a smile? I'm gonna let you guys try to think about it and tell me if that's just a smile. That's right, Ashley. In Twitter, you can chat about anything. Hi, Callie. That's correct. So the answer, is it just a smile? Well, nope, it's not just a smile. It's also an arrow that points from the A to the Z. You see that? And that's letting everybody know, it subtly hints that Amazon has everything you need from A to Z. Pretty neat. So here's one that you may not be too familiar with, or maybe some of you are. How many of you have ever tried a Toblerone candy bar? Good job, Bridget. Has anybody tried a Toblerone candy bar? Let me show your, you their logo and see if that helps. So the Toblerone logo is a mountain with the word Toblerone underneath of it. So why would a candy bar have a mountain? as a logo any ideas well so the toblerone candy bar um the mountain is believed to be the matterhorn mountain which is in the swiss alps and there is something hidden inside of this mountain. Do you see it? Right here. Look at that right there. Oops. Right there. Do you see it? It's a bear. <laughs> I like that, Tim. We are the peak of candy bars. That's pretty funny. And you know, the whole candy bar itself is made out of tiny little peaks. So that's very good. So if you look really closely on the logo, you can make out a bear. So why is a bear so important? Well, Toblerone was founded in the city of Bern which is known as the city of bears. Even on their coat of arms for the city, they have bears on it. So it's a tribute to where the company started. We'll look at one more with a hidden element in it. So I'm sure you've all seen the FedEx logo. Oh, before we continue, I forgot I had this picture. There's a picture of all the peaks of the candy bar. And it is a pretty good candy bar. So the FedEx logo. Do you guys know what's hidden inside the FedEx logo? Oh, hi Rhino. Sorry. <laughs> Anybody know what's hidden inside? Look at the blank space between the E and, an X, and the X. What do you see in that blank space there? Go ahead and comment what's in this blank space right here. 
Exactly, Bridget, that's an arrow. So, this arrow symbolizes how the company is always moving forward with your mail and your packages. They use the latest technology for tracking, so they're always looking forward to improve themselves and get your packages and mail where it needs to be as quickly as possible. Good job, Ashley. So all of these characteristics in the logos, the appearance, how it makes you feel, it's all part of a company's brand. So it's very important to have a reliable brand image for a company to be successful. If their image or brand falters, then the, co the company itself can suffer. So when you start a business, you are part of your brand. The way you dress, the way you interact with people, this all represents your company's brand. So let's talk a little bit about Nike again. Nike's brand relates to their product, athletic apparel. They have set up their brand to be the athletic apparel for everyone. So it doesn't matter who you are or what, what your age is or at what stage of fitness you are at. Nike is there for you to motivate you to be stronger, faster, and victorious. And their brand makes you feel that way. Personal branding is very important. When I talk about personal branding, it's all about you and your personality. Have you ever thought of what your, your logo would be like? Are you spicy? Are you sweet? Are you a bright color or are you neutral and kind of laid back? Are you quiet or are you really, really loud? What activities do you like? Your energy, personality, and likes are all your personal brand. So tell me some of the things that you like. Write them in the comments. So what are some of the things that you like? I feel like I should have the Jeopardy music on waiting for answers to come through. <laughs> Shopping and gymnastics, awesome. So those are things that you like, Bridget. That's really cool. Art, yes, I like art too. Food, crafting and playing, awesome. Good job, Ashley. Gina, are you still on? What are things that you like? What about you, Rhino? <laughs> Competing in chili cook-offs. That's awesome, Rhino. I might have to come out to Camp Maha and, t and try some. All right, well, today what we're going to do is we're going to design a cereal brand around you okay so grab your paper your cereal box your crayons all your supplies get them together and get ready we're not going to do anything yet just wait
Give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Gina likes clothes, awesome. Angel likes cotton candy, oh, unicorns. Softball, camping and riding bikes, very cool. So Rhino says that he now lives in Tulsa, Oklahoma, but during training week, he used to always bring a big pot of it, pot of his chili out to Camp Ma. Well, we will miss you. So before we start thinking about what our cereal brand name is, think of what pictures you want to put on your box or your paper and what colors you're going to pick. What color represents you? Yesterday, I made my cereal box and it was only after I put all of my brand characteristics on it that I was able to figure out what kind of cereal it would be. So I want you to begin by adding some pictures or drawing some pictures onto your cereal box or paper of things that you like to do. If you have a cereal box, cover it with construction paper first. That'll be your first step. If you have paper, you can go ahead and start drawing. So for example, Bridget, you could draw a balance beam or the bars or the pummel horse. You could draw a shopping bag or cut a shopping bag picture out of a magazine and glue it onto your box. You can also get a picture of an artist palette or draw an artist palette and put that on your box as well. Ashley, you like food and crafting and playing. So for food, you, I'm sure you can find plenty of pictures of food in magazines. Um, you can draw a plate of spaghetti if that's your favorite dish. You can put, um, draw a pair of scissors. You could draw your favorite game that you like to play. Um, Rhino, you can absolutely draw a big old pot of chili on your cereal box or your piece of paper because you really like competing in chili cook-offs. Gina, you can dry, uh, draw different clothes. Maybe you wanna draw your favorite outfit on your cereal box. Jamie, it looks like, uh, yes, you, have to put a unicorn on your box. I mean, who doesn't love unicorns? And cotton candy, um, you can draw a softball, put a tent up, put a bicycle on it. You can put on your favorite colors. You can pretty much put anything on the box that is important to you. So while you're working on that, I'm going to show you guys my cereal box. Are you ready? So I love horses. If I could spend 20 hours a day just hanging out with my horse, I would totally do that. But I think he'd get sick of me. And feasibly, I can't do that. So on my cereal box, I have a couple horses. There's a horse, oops, I'm turning it the wrong way. So there's a horse right here and there's the big horse right in the center. So as you look at my cereal box, I'll bring it in closer so you can see. There's coffee, I put the words dogs, fun, games, um, Barnes and Noble, because I like reading. I put Pearl Jam on there, because that's one of my favorite bands. And then I have a tree over here with the Girl Scouts truffle on it, because I work for Girl Scouts and I love my job and I love trees. Here's a tent, because I love to go camping. My favorite TV show is Survivor. Um, I love to be out in nature. 
I love Disney. I'm a night owl. I am not a morning person at all, but during camp season, I figure it out. <laughs> um, Earth Day and saving the Earth is very important to me. I'm also an apple girl. So I got this funny, funny, funny face horse right here, and it looks like he's trying to eat my apple. But it's an, I put apple on there because I really prefer apple products. I also like cats and sea turtles. So you see how that's a little bit all about me. So I like reading. One of the things I did was I took a page from a book and put it on my box. Now don't go ripping pages out of your favorite book. Have an adult print off a part of a book for you or just simply write the title of your favorite book on your, on your box or your paper. Once you have finished your box, look at it. You have to look at all of it. Because once you've finished it, and when you look at the cereal brand you've created, what do you see? Is it a picture of you and your brand? Does it reflect your style, confidence, and your personal brand? So after I did my cereal, I was sitting there looking at it thinking, what kind of cereal would have anything to do with horses or sea turtles or anything like that. It just sounds silly. But it came to me that my cereal flavor, because I love coffee, um, I love, uh, horses usually sometimes eat apples. Um, I came up with the idea that my cereal is salted caramel frappuccino crisp cereal. It's a mouthful, but I think it might be pretty good. So my ingredients are salty, sweet, and strong. Your Girl Scout brand makes a great impression on your community and the people around you. So continue today to create your brand and change the world. Post a picture of your cereal box or your, or your cereal paper in the comments when you get finished using the hashtags GSSN and Girl Scouts at Home. I really want to see them. I can't wait to see them. So let's see you and your personal brand. For those of you looking or interested, this helps with the entrepreneur badge and the design a product badge. Uh, thank you for tuning in today. I really hope you enjoyed this activity and you all find out what kind of cereal you are. I have a feeling Rhino yours is going to be a little chili flavored. <clears throat> Don't forget to join us this afternoon for an archery demonstration with Haley Fugue at 2 p.m. Central Time right here at Lakeview Cabin. Sunday at 3 p.m. Central, we'll be hosting a Zoom tutorial for volunteers to show you how to use the platform to host your virtual troop meetings. Let's see if there's any questions. You're very welcome, Bridget. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, we're all here for you, and I cannot wait to see your cereals. Have a great day. Bye.